It is almost time for Bobcat basketball 2018-2019. I'm Russ Eisenstein, the voice of the Ohio Bobcats. The season is here, and that means we get the pleasure of visiting with Saul Phillips again. Good to see you, head coach. How are you? Good to be seen. We're looking forward to getting going. So there is no off season anymore. So I'll ask you, though, how was your march to right now? Always good. Uh, spent a lot of time just getting guys acclimated to the point where we could start practice and start making some... Uh, some headway, uh, cracked out the name tags for the new guys for a while, but it, it, we're, we're certainly at the point now that uh, there's a level of comfort and that's been very good. But it was, it's, been a, it's been a fun off season. Uh, it's been a busy off season. There are more guys on the floor that fans won't know yet uh, than they actually know. And that's an interesting dynamic of this roster. How do you handle that? Well, first of all, you gotta make sure that they're getting to know each other as, as people because when anytime you're going through a season there's going to be adversity, there's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. Uh, knowing how to help bring each other out of funks, knowing how to uh, what people's strengths and weaknesses are uh, is absolutely necessary for a team. At the same time, uh, you know, you're also identifying, all right, what do we need to work at? What, what can we be really, really good at? Uh, and then obviously not being able to take anything for granted, it, you know, the, the most fundamental basic thing, you know, you're starting back at ground zero with the newcomers and, and you're getting everybody on the same page as quickly as you can. Uh, it's the nature of the program with this fan base and then with the tradition that Ohio has. Expectations are always high and there could be urgency or pressure associated with that, uh, but there's still a season to be played. Um, and with this roster and the makeup of this team, how do you handle all of that? Not easy. Well, it's, coaching is like any other job, any profession, anything you're at, there's going to be stressors, there's going to be things that, and the, the biggest thing that I could do at all times is just focus on my group and uh, get them to win as many games as we can, and that'll be, I, I think it's going to be very possible with this group. I, I really think we've got a good squad. You have more of a roster to manage and, and use combinations than you did last year. Obviously, injuries were a big part of last season. What do you expect out of your newcomers? Well, we're going to need some impact out of some of them. And for the ones that maybe aren't on the court as early, further the development, because obviously it was every healthy man up at some point last right. season. Uh, in fact, I've referenced that today when I spoke to the team. You know, don't get too caught up in where you're at in terms of depth chart because it could be the 12th guy on the team, could be the guy on the free throw line in the queue trying to get us to the NCAA tournament. Right. right. Your, your leaders uh, have that leadership ability that are coming back. That's why they're leaders and veterans. Um, what do you need out of them? Steady, steady leadership. Uh, you know, maybe a little help getting guys up to speed on things they're struggling with on the court. We, there was a case where we were doing a drill today and I said what the drill was and I was about to go through it and the next thing you know TK is getting everybody in their spots and I'm like... He's that, a sophomore that, now. That's great, yeah exactly, <laughs> that's great. That's It's neat to see him taking that type of leadership role you want that at your point guard. Uh, one of the bigger questions that I got during the offseason was the health of Jordan Dardis and the health of Jason Carter. So head coach, what's their health status? Well, Jason is healthy and full go right now. Jordan, we're waiting to get you know, a little more strength into his, uh, into his hips and a little more flexibility into his hips. And when he gets the green light, he'll be activated too. But it went quicker for Jason than it did for uh, Jordy because Jordy obviously played longer on the, on the hips. With the, the roster, the way it's constructed, does that change any uh, bit of style of play um, and what you want to see in, in actual gameplay on the floor? Well, we certainly are going to be a lot more aggressive on the offensive glass now that we're not playing shooting guards at the four. Uh, <laughs> that, that'll, that'll definitely... That helps. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there are some basic things that you always want to... You want your program to be about, we like to limit turnovers. We like... There are the types of shots we get, how we generate them. That doesn't change. But there are new wrinkles offensively that we've put in to try to take advantage of where our strengths lie, which with a full roster certainly differs from where they may have lied last year. The other thing is, is putting more on the back of the point guard. Last year, I was hesitant to run more for TK than we did because he had to run a team. Well, he's comfortable. Uh, Jay Preston, our freshman point guard, and Antonio Coward, who plays some point guard as well, uh, I think 
are assuming a, a bigger role in some things than maybe we put on a true freshman last year. We've worked with each other for a couple of years now because you led me to the next question, and that's TK, Tavian Kirk. What, what do you want to see from him? What's the growth of his game from freshman to sophomore year? Well, he's really progressed at uh, his distribution of the ball. He's, he's become a very good passer off the screen and roll. Uh, and with him, the, the biggest thing is staying locked in at all times uh, and understanding that the team is looking to him as a leader with the ball in his hands. Uh, that means he can't get into some of the other foolishness on the court that he may be drawn toward at times. Well, that tends to happen. We all must avoid foolishness in life. However, we have fun with it too. And the schedule is very fun. From a broadcasting standpoint, I think it's awesome. This is a at-large worthy schedule. Um, you put it together, why the challenging schedule this year? Because we want to get to the point where we can possibly get at large. Uh, you know, I, I think it gets us ready for the league. Uh, and I, I just think, you know, if we aspire to be a team that can get into the dance and, and make some noise, I think that's who you play. And what is that, six teams that made the tournament last year on our schedule? That's a pretty good chunk. So. Uh, our guys are ready for it, and it will cause certainly some growing pains. And, uh, you know, there won't be the yawners in the preseason that sometimes show up on schedules. Right. But I, I do think that we need to test our guys and we need to push ourselves. Let's see. We've gone to the Virgin Islands and Hawaii and now Jamaica. That's a fun trip. Well, I can't take credit for the Virgin Islands or uh, Hawaii. Or Hawaii. Yeah, those were on the schedule before. But yeah. the Jamaica trip offers us a nice opportunity. Uh, we actually thought we were going to be playing Georgetown down there. That right. was the biggest draw to get in there. Yeah. We were playing South Florida and we we're playing uh, Loyola Marymount, but certainly a great chance for us to to go and, and maybe bond in a little bit more of a unique location than uh, s somewhere in Northeast Ohio or Central Ohio. Uh, the league, it's been a long time since there's been an at-large berth. Obviously, everybody knows the year 1999. The league is deeper now, the league is stronger now. Buffalo uh, has certainly helped in that regard as well. Your thoughts on the league as you get set for another year in the MAC? Well, I have to make out my, my rankings, and I honestly don't even know where to start in terms of handicapping where these teams are going to be. Uh, certainly, we're a mystery to most people in the league, and I don't think anybody's got a handle on where we're going to be, and there are more teams like us out there. Uh, you know, I, I, the, the beauty of this league, the toughness of its league, and the reason that we were the 10th rated league in the nation last year, yet we didn't. Buffalo may have been an at-large candidate had they not won the tournament. But the, the thing that's challenging in terms of trying to get to an at-large bid is there aren't those stretches where you think you can throw together eight, nine right. wins in a row if you're not playing your absolute best. It's every night is a challenge. And uh, to do that over the course of 18 games without any kind of bye week, without anything, it is a big it's a grind. It's yeah. what it is. Uh, so having the type of team that can withstand that is is really key. If you're gonna, if we're gonna as, as a conference, get an at-large team at some point. We always ask you about the family. Your wife uh, put out a first book, which was "Kindness Is Contagious." Kindness is courageous now. Cozy's for the cure as well. Your boys are doing good, I hope. How's everybody doing? Everybody's doing great. Everybody's happy, healthy. Uh, just wrapped up a couple football seasons. My daughter's running cross country. My wife is speaking all over the nation on the virtues of kindness. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're a busy family. It's been good, and it's, uh, that's the way we like it. Have you read the book, the second one? Oh, see, now I've read all of those articles before the book even oh, came out. Yeah. The book is a compilation of the sure. articles she writes for a newspaper. So yes, and I, I better say yes or else I'll get in real trouble. No doubt. Well, it is contagious, it is courageous, and Bobcat basketball will be fun. Thanks, Saul. Thanks. That's head coach Saul Phillips. I'm Russ Eisenstein. We'll join you with a preseason exhibition ball game against Rio Grande on the Ohio IMG Sports Network. And then, of course, check out ohiobobcats.com for all of the schedule listings all season long. Rob Cornelius and I will be with you for all the games all year, and then we'll see where this thing goes. Bobcat Basketball 2018-2019 for the entire Bobcat TV crew. I'm Russ Eisenstein, and this is Bobcat TV.